Want to know what the big announcements were here at the eClinical Works Enterprise Summit in Boston, Massachusetts? Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. Hello and welcome to Healthcare IT Today, where we bring you the latest insights and interesting technologies from the world of health IT. I'm Colin Hung and I'm here at the eClinical Works Enterprise Summit in Boston, Massachusetts, covering it for the second time. I'm excited to be here and I'm looking forward to giving you a quick review of what I heard and what I saw here at the event. It's not often that we get asked to come back year after year after year to a organization's user conference to be able to compare the promises that were made 12 months ago to the progress actually made in the intervening 12 months. So when eClinical Works invited us to come down to their enterprise summit again, we jumped at the chance because I certainly was very interested to see if the company lived up to all the AI promises that they made the prior year. Because if you remember, eClinical Works leaned in heavy to AI 12 months ago, and they had a lot of really cool features that they debuted. So I wanted to come back down here and see how those deployments went. So to answer the big question, did eClinical Works live up to the promises they made 12 months ago? Well, I'll let Richard Ells tell you in his words. Hey, uh, my name is Rich Eels. I'm the VP of Innovation and Integration for United Digestive. Uh, it's a healthcare practice based in the Southeast US mainly, uh, Georgia, Florida, and the Carolinas. Um, over 80 locations, 200 providers, and uh, well over uh, 1,000 team members every day coming in taking care of our patients. Um, we've really enjoyed sort of the pace of upgrades that they've done. Uh, every year there's new features coming out that are meaningful and actually impact our patients in a positive way and our providers' lives getting a little easier each time too. Um, last year uh, there was a lot of hype and excitement about what AI could do and it's nice to see it really coming into fruition this year um, when eClinical is actually delivering on those AI products. Now last year, Jiresh Navani, who's the CEO of eClinical Works, showcased an application of AI on top of their Prisma system. Prisma is what a clinical works uses to gather all of the information about a particular patient from HIEs and participating healthcare organizations. Now, over the last 12 months, the team at Guidewell actually implemented this very use case. Yeah, I'm the director of clinical informatics and business intelligence at Guidewell DCMG. So we're about 150 provider practice in South Florida. Yeah, so that's called Prisma AI. Um, and what it does is it, it works with HIEs all over North America and it pulls data in. If you have the patient on your schedule, it'll actually create a little summary. It'll look at thousands of documents on that particular patient and then create a real nice concise summary of just the relevant good parts, as I like to call it, of, of all those CCDAs and technical documents on a patient. This was the first module or application that we really had providers reaching out to us and trying to turn on when they heard from their other colleagues how amazing and magical, if I could use that term, it, it, Suno AI was in bringing some of this data into the chart. One of the most impressive things I saw last year, and again this year, was the application of AI to personalize and humanize the content within the EHR, the content on the portal, and the communications with patients. And this year, Jiresh, while he was on stage, showed off a very impressive new feature, set of features. And that was giving the clinicians, and indeed any user of eClinical Works, the ability to actually tune how that AI will generate the content for those various applications. With a single click of the button, users can specify the length of the response. So do you want to be verbose? Do you want to be very concise? They can also set the tone of the response. So should it be more casual, more formal, more clinical, less clinical? And they can even specify the relative, pos uh, relative positivity or negativity of the particular generator response. It was actually really, really impressive. Now, here's Lalith again to talk about the impact that these kinds of features in terms of personalizing and humanizing the content in the EHR has had for their clinicians and their patients. With Suno AI, what it does is it listens to the conversation with you and the patient so it's natural, the patient's at ease, you're not staring at a computer typing and everything, and you're not 
missing any of the pertinent information. Everything is being captured. So it really builds this beautiful story of the patient's consult visit when it used to be a sentence or two about you know, a uh, actual, like, what, what the patient's here for and all the legalese that is in there. It's now like a story of what the patients are actually there for. And it makes the provider really enjoy the experience, the patient enjoy the experience, and it puts less burden on documentation. One of the most practical applications of AI, and the feature that got the biggest applause last year, was using AI to manage the inbound fax queue for eClinical Works. I can tell you over the last 12 months, a lot of customers of eClinical Works have deployed this technology. While I was here, I had the chance to sit down with Dr. Seth Eaton. He's a pediatrician at MedPeds. He and I sat down and had a conversation about how they are using eClinical Works' AI assistant for, to manage the high volume of inbound electronic documentations that they received. That AI assistant is allowing them to keep up with that high volume. Here he is. So, um, AI basically reads incoming documents, identifies the patient, and is able to identify within our system which patient it applies to, and it then attaches that document to that patient record. We then have to still take that record and attach it to a specific portion of the medical record. Uh, and for that, we use an outside service that uh, gets into our charts and does that last piece. Mm -hmm. Last year, eClinical Works presented a case study of their pilot project to use AI to reduce no-shows. That pilot was with Urban Health Plan and they presented some incredible numbers of how they were able to not only improve no-show rates, but also reduce the number of double booking they had to do in order to fill their schedules. Now at the time last year, they predicted that they would fill an additional 17,000 appointments using this technology over the course of 12 months. Well, it turns out that estimate was incorrect. Urban Health Plan this year reported that they actually filled 25,000 extra appointments, which is an incredible number. And it just shows that the judicious application of AI can truly lead to some organizational improvements and better access for patients overall. Now, what were some of the other announcements of note? Well, there were some improvements made to eClinical Works' ambient clinical voice system. They did a live demo on stage here where they were able to show that it was able to tell the difference between when the patient was talking about the medical condition of one of their loved ones versus their own medical condition. And so it was really impressive to see that it was able to discern that difference and put the right information into the EHR. Another big announcement here was Prime Plus. And this was eClinical Works' way of setting their sights on reducing the medication costs for patients. With Prime Plus, a physician is going to be able to send patients a prescription, and when that patient opens up their prescription, they'll be able to see right then and there options of where they can fulfill that script and the cost. And so that way, they're able to choose which pharmacy they would like it to go to, and when they click that button, they, that script will be sent right there. This will allow patients to see how they could perhaps save a little bit of money by going to a different pharmacy to fill that script. I think it'll be interesting to see how this particular technology gets deployed, and I'm certainly hoping that one day the system will be able to tell the patient which coupons they're eligible for or maybe some special programs that they're eligible for. And so not only will they be able to see the price, they'll be able to see the discounts that they're able to receive because of the information that's stored on the front end based on SDOH parameters that are entered into eClinical Works. Overall, it has been a great conference and it's easy to see how the customers here feel very supported by the team at eClinical Works. In fact, I had the chance to talk to Kim Stahl, who is a practice administrator at Maryland, Maryland Endocrine, about this about their journey with eClinical Works and how they have been supported by the company. Here she is. 
I really believe that if I hadn't had the support of, I'm going to call out some people right now because mm -hmm. I have to. So Jody Farrell from the RCM has been a godsend. She will, I mean, her and I sometimes will talk at 10 o'clock at night because that's the only time that I had open or, you know, she, I reached out with a question and she couldn't get back to me and she will, um, she'll meet with my um, staff one-on-one, -on -one, like she'll do video calls, whatever, to really try and help and assist us. And she's really been a great support. Cyril, Kunal um, have been awesome as well. Um, it's just been, um, just been a great experience. And every time I've had a question that I couldn't get answered by my.eclinicalworks.com, which I am on every day, a million, trillion, bazillion times, I'm not kidding. I gave all the staff, they didn't have access to it, none of them. So now I'm like, guys, stop asking me. Go ahead and put in your own thing. Use the chat. I, and I said, lots of times if you go ahead and ask the question, it'll give you the scenarios and it works and you don't even have to talk to anyone. So, I mean, I'm on there all the time. So I think there's just so many resources to help you whenever I have had a hurdle or someone hasn't been able to help. I have my contact people that I can reach out to and they'll they'll get me the help I need. So I've never felt like I was like alone just doing this, you know, on my own. Hey, I want to end by sending out a big thank you to the team at eClinical Works for allowing us to come down and cover the event again this year. It was very nice to be able to see the progress over the last 12 months and compare the promises made to actually what was deployed. And hey, if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, please like and subscribe. Also, head on over to healthcareittoday.com where you can find more great content like this. I'm Colin Hung. Thanks for being here, and I'll catch you on the next video.